Hello, my name is Lorraine Michou. I'm a geophysicist from CGG. Welcome to my e-lecture. The subject is 4D inversion of continuous land seismic reservoir monitoring of thermal EOR to enhance oil recovery. The reservoir in question is located in the Netherlands and named as Schronnebeek Reservoir. It's a medium heavy oil film for which oil recovery is thermally improved by steam injection. On the pad of the film, the continuous size, a continuous seismic monitoring system was installed in 2012 for two years. The aim of this monitoring was to map the steam chest propagation over the time. During the first year of the monitoring, the survey design was a 2D line. The time shift calculated on the seismic data by cross-correlation were convincing, so the following year the system was extended on a small 3D area. At that time, there were three lines of 12 sources and five lines of hydrophone. The image area was about 120 meters by 800 meters. On the map, you also see the horizontal steam injector in blue, two horizontal producers in red, and two deviated observational wells in green. The acquisition system is buried under the weathering layer to ensure repeatability and reduce its sensitivity to weather changes. Here is a typical CMP section. The reservoir is around 0.6 seconds, and the blue point represents a horizontal steam injector. To visualize the calendar dimension of this continuous seismic monitoring, let's look at one trace at the vertical of the injector over the days. On this calendar trace, you see some reflectivity varies, or they are constant. And this is after processing. More or less everything looks constant. But if you look carefully and remove the first trace to all the days to look at the variation, you see some clear 4D variation in the reservoir and below the reservoir. These are the 4D continuous monitoring data that will be used for the 4D inversion. Through this e-lecture, I will present you the, the effect of thermal EOR, the impact on elastic parameters in a sandstone reservoir, and move on the 4D inversion conducted on the continuous seismic monitoring. I will present you the workflow and then the result. I will end the presentation with some feedback from Shell Global Solutions International. So the following animation represents an ideal um, animation of Schronnebeek um, behavior, Schronnebeek be reservoir behavior under steam injection. The reservoir is located between the two red dashed lines. The horizontal injector is the blue point, and the two horizontal producer are the two red points. In Schronnebeek, in an homogeneous reservoir, Steam injected low pressure is expected to rise to the top of the reservoir. Very rapidly, the entire reservoir will be under pressure. Steam should spread horizontally, condense, hot water will descend through the reservoir, heating the oil, so improving its mobility. The temperature profile is expected to be very high through the steam layer and then decreasing downward through the reservoir. The question is, what are the effects of thermal EOR, so temperature, steam and pressure, on p-velocity and density. So on this diagram, the x-axis is the variation of density and on the y-axis is the variation of p-velocity. The green point represents an initial state in the reservoir. Going from point 0.1 to point 0.2, the temperature has been increased about 200 degrees. It clearly decreased the compressional velocity. Now, going from state 2 to state 3, the steam saturation has been increased. It decreased the density, but has only a small impact on p-velocity. Regarding pressure, the steam injection pressure in Schronnebeek was very low, so it is the pressure impact on the point of the reservoir is expected to be very small. So, to summarize this diagram, it is essential to take into account the density variation to map the steam chest propagation. So we need to look at the seismic amplitude variation. If we look at the vertical distribution of these factors on p-velocity and density, even if pressure has a small impact 
on p-velocity, it affects the entire thickness of the reservoir, and same for temperature. Whereas older steam has a large impact on density and on p-velocity, it is only on a small layer at the top of the reservoir, one, two, three milliseconds maybe. And that's why to map the steam uh, chest propagation, it is required to look at the seismic amplitude and have a very good vertical resolution of this variation. Therefore, we conducted a 4D seismic inversion. I will present you the workflow in three steps and then the result. First step is the wavelet estimation to quantify the fit between the seismic and the well data. The seismic is perpendicular to the deviated observational well and therefore the estimation of this wavelet was only possible in a small, small window at the intersection between the seismic and the well data. On small window about 100 milliseconds. On the right, you see the correlation between the well data and the seismic data. The cross correlation between the two is about 0.65 for the 2D monitoring and then 0.8 for the 3D monitoring, thanks to 3D processing tools. These values are reasonable considering we are correlated deviated observational well to a perpendicular 2D line or 3D uh, strip monitor area. The second step is the stratigraphic inversion of the base of the data to quantify the seismic amplitude in terms of acoustic impedance. On the left, you see the impedance well log and the initial model, and on the right, you see a 2D section with the um, amplitude values and the stratigraphic layers and the initial model from the well log. The base is taken prior to injection for the 2D monitoring and in April 2012 for the 3D monitoring. So that's one year after steam started to be injected. Here are the results of the base inversion and looking both at the well or the 2D section, the seismic amplitudes are current with the impedance well log. Third step, but the most important, the 4D inversion of the continuous seismic data. So there are several key points. First of all, we're not dealing with several vintages, but with many vintages, up to one per day. Of course, we can stack them on a weekly or monthly basis. But this calendar dimensions is the real, is the real strength for the 4D inversion. Indeed, we will simultaneously invert all vintages to take into account this rich calendar dimension. The inversion is using a uh, simulated annealing procedure with a single objective function. Second key point, we are looking at very small variation over the calendar time and on thin intervals. So the layers of the stratigraphic mo uh, model are very thin, about 2 milliseconds, and the same initial model is used for all vintages. The initial model is the result of the base inversion, which gives us the geologi geological background of the reservoir. Third key point, and very important, how did we manage to take into account the 4D time shift? Quite often in 4D inversion, the reflectivity time of the monitors is aligned to the base. It wasn't the case here. The seismic data were not stretched prior inversion. Each vintage has the same number of layers and the time thickness of each layer is linked to the p-velocities. So the time shift are inverted. And finally, during the inversion process, perturbation not current with rock physics are rejected. Let's look at the result of the forward inversion. On the top, you, you see the time schedule. And below, you see a 2D section of impedance ratio monitor over the base. Here the monitor is taken a few days after um, the base was taken and is still during cold production. You see, you observe no variation. Now the same section 80 days after steam started to be injected. You start to see two anomalies of decrease of impedance in blue, one at the vertical of the injector and one on the western part. Now, about two months later, these two anomalies all confirm. They appear not connected and no variation are seen on the eastern part. 
To visualize the calendar dimension of the continuous monitoring, let's look at one stratigraphic layer at, over the time. So over the time, as soon as things start to be injected, you start to see a decrease of impedance at the vertical of the, of the injector, represented by the blue dashed line. And after a certain period, you see another decrease of impedance on the western part. How are all these anomalies connected? Or all these anomalies connected? These are questions that we try to answer with a 3D monitoring. First, let's just zoom on the trace at the vertical of the injector and look at it before, during cold production, so before steam injection and three months after steam started to be injected. So, on the left, you see amplitude variation computed by cross correlation with a sliding window about 20 milliseconds. You see clear amplitude variation at the top of the reservoir spread over 20 millisecond thickness. On the right, you see result from the 4D inversion. From left to right, you see the impedance of the base in blue, first panel, and the impedance of the monitor in red. On the second panel, you see the ratio of impedance to the monitor over the base, and you see that the 4D variation has been focused on 4 milliseconds at the top of the reservoir. The third and fourth panel shows the low residual Seismic in black is very close to the synthetic in blue for the base and in red for the monitor. Last panel represents the time shift estimated by the inversion process, 0.41 milliseconds at the base of the reservoir. It well correlates with the 0.43 milliseconds computed by cross correlation on the seismic data. So, while finding the same order of magnitude of time shift, it focused the 4D even at the top of the reservoir. Now let's look at the result of the 4D inversion on the 3D continuous monitoring. Just to remember, so the base for this 3D monitoring was in April 2012. It does not represent the initial state of the reservoir. But because there were no variation on the eastern pole, we managed to re-estimate the wavelet on the well observational two. And third point, um, the inversion was conducted on a monthly basis for this 3D monitoring. So, on the top you see, still see the time schedule and the steam injection curve. On the below, you see the horizon of the base of the reservoir and the yellow blob represents a decrease of impedance over 4%. Between April and June, you only see a decrease in, of impedance around the injector. Now in July, you see a decrease of impedance along the injector and along the western producer. And if you look carefully, you see something north. A month later, in August, Steam, you clearly see that steam injection affects the reservoir along the injector and then on the western part along the, uh, the western producer. It um, bypassed the observational well by a north path. Months later, again, you clearly see that the steam injection has no impact on the eastern part of the injector. It is not obvious, but the, four, the 4D even are focused on 4 milliseconds at the top of the reservoir. So, two slides from Shell Global Solutions International to present their feedback. Seismic amplitude and acoustic impedance map are in agreement with the main flow direction seen from production data. No variation due to steam in injection has been seen on the eastern pole and the seismic confirms the suspected connection between the injector and the western producer. Amplitude map were used to define an approximate position of higher conductivity features between the injector and the western producer. It resulted in improved the match between the liquid production data, the temperature data from the western producer, and the pressure and temperature measurement in the observational well, wells data. 
significant insight about steam distribution and pr possible preferential paths were obtained. However, to properly constrain the reservoir model, a full coverage of the, of the reservoir will be needed. For the moment, the, and the, size, the permanent seismic monitoring only covered 800 meter long by 120 meter large. In addition, quantitative values of temperature, gas saturation and pressure from a 4D inversion would, would be of interest. So to summarize, a continuous seismic monitoring system was installed during, um, in Schronnebeek and recorded continuously during two years. The 4D inversion of the continuous seismic data show current amplitude, seismic amplitude with the world data. The 4D inversion has improved the resolution of the measure variation on 4 milliseconds at the top of the reservoir and matched with the well measurement. Quantity values of acoustic impedance were obtained. It would be of interest to go further and interpret this acoustic impedance in terms of temperature and steam variation, but there are current limits. The pulse acquisition, the limited reservoir coverage, and the absence of a base prior steam injection for the 3D monitoring make it extremely difficult to discriminate between temperature and steam variation. I would like to thanks, thank the Shell Global Solution International and NAM for permission to, work, uh, to present this work. Thank you to Justina Jarnut, Keith Holman from Shell Global Solutions International. And thank you to my co-authors, Yves Laffey, Thierry Coléo, Julien Coton, and Eric Fogg from CGG. Thank you. <laughs>